Each member of the crew for Space Shuttle Endeavour's final flight has been to space before. In fact, STS-134 is the fourth trip to the International Space Station for U.S. Navy Captain Mark Kelly, tying the record for the most visits. Kelly was born in Orange, New Jersey, and grew up in West Orange. As a young boy watching the Apollo moon landings, he thought about becoming an astronaut, but as he got older, it seemed out of the question. After high school, Kelly won an appointment to the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy with a plan for a career at sea. Then he made a trip on a grain carrier. Going from Seattle to a place called Savaga, Egypt. It's in the southern part of Egypt on the Red Sea. And getting across the Pacific, that ship went 12 knots. And it took us over a month to get across the Pacific Ocean and get us to Singapore. And I thought, boy, this is way too slow. So that's when I started thinking about flying airplanes in the Navy. When he finished his bachelor's degrees in marine engineering and marine transportation at the academy, Kelly took his commission and went to the Navy Flight School. He made two deployments during Operation Desert Storm and flew 39 combat missions, earned a Master of Science in Aeronautical Engineering at the Navy Postgraduate School, and then went to the Navy Test Pilot School, where the astronaut bug bit him again. You know, being a test pilot's fun. You get to test new things and sometimes fly new airplanes. And the space shuttle, you know, after STS-134, only has 134 flights. It's still more or less in a test program, even though we've been flying it for nearly 30 years now. So it's like the ultimate test pilot job. Kelly was an instructor at test pilot school when he was picked for the astronaut corps in 1996. Kelly was the pilot on shuttle mission STS-108 in 2001 and the second return to flight test mission in 2006. And he commanded the 2008 flight that delivered the Kibo laboratory module. Air Force Colonel Mike Fink has been to the station twice before, for a year on two long duration missions. And he'll set a new record for time spent in space by an American at the end of this flight. Fink was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and grew up in the suburb of Emsworth. And I was the oldest of nine kids. We didn't have a lot of money, but we're still able to spend time in planetariums and the museums and, and the science centers that uh, are all over the city. Uh, had a um, benefit and blessing to be able to, to, to go to uh, a private high school. I had to work on the weekends to make it happen, but uh, the school made it work too. And I had a great, excellent education in high school, studying science and math and all the things that really excited me. Fink won an Air Force ROTC scholarship to MIT, where he earned bachelor's degrees in aeronautics and astronautics and Earth atmospheric and planetary sciences. That summer, he attended an exchange program with the Moscow Aviation Institute before heading to Stanford for a master's in aeronautics and astronautics. Then he started an abbreviated career as a fighter pilot. And it turns out after six or seven months, uh, the Air Force and I both agreed that I wasn't going to be the God's gift to, to aviation that I thought I was going to be and I uh, wasn't destined to become a fighter pilot, so I washed out of pilot training. Fink found his niche as an engineer and then a flight test engineer, attending the Air Force Test Pilot School and serving at posts in Southern California and later in Japan. But he never gave up his childhood dream. When I was three years old, I remember watching people walk on the moon. And I knew right then and there that's something I wanted to do. Fink was selected as an astronaut in 1996. He spent six months as flight engineer on the International Space Station's Expedition 9 in 2004 and performed four spacewalks. Then another six months as commander of Expedition 18 and performed two more EVAs. One of his crewmates from that flight is with him again on this one. Dr. Greg Shamatov was born in Montreal, Canada, and had a father he describes as a space fanatic. Shamatov remembers watching Star Trek as a little boy and being intrigued. But then we went on a family vacation to Florida, and it was the time of Apollo 11, so we got to see the launch of Apollo 11 on a family vacation there. I was six, and, um, <clears throat> and uh, that was it. At that, I told my dad uh, at that point that I wanted to do that and never changed my mind. The family moved to the United States and settled in San Jose, California when Shamatov was 11. He graduated from high school there and went to Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo to study physics. The launch of the first space shuttle mission during his freshman year 
changed his focus. And I, I just remember so vividly being in the dormitory, you know, people gathered to watch this, the first flight. And, um, and, and for me, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd wanted to do this all my life, but there wasn't, uh, there yet wasn't any um, uh, urgency or sense of uh, direction, you know, of, of how to do it. Um, and, uh, and as soon as that happened, I said, I got to call NASA and ask him what I have to do. When he got interested in robots, he changed his major and earned a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering at Cal Poly, then a Master's in Aeronautical Engineering at Caltech. On a fellowship at Draper Laboratory in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Shamatov worked on spacecraft guidance controls for several NASA projects while earning his doctorate in aeronautics and astronautics at MIT. Then he taught aeronautical engineering at the University of Sydney before he came to work at the Johnson Space Center in 1995 developing software applications. He was picked for the astronaut corps in 1998 and spent 183 days in space as part of the space station's Expedition 17 and 18 crews. Italian Air Force Colonel Roberto Vittori of the European Space Agency has made two previous trips to the International Space Station, but he spent less than three weeks in space. Vittori was born in Viterbo and grew up in nearby Bomarzo in central Italy. Very small, in the middle of a beautiful uh, forest in the countryside, and I grew up playing soccer outside my, my school. I was uh, very good in defense. And, uh, and, that was, uh, uh, and, and then I, was, I, I loved to play in the woods with my, my friends. He left Bomarzo for college to study physics, but his boyhood interest in flying reasserted itself. Vittori earned a bachelor's degree in aeronautical science at the Italian Air Force Academy and completed his basic pilot training with the U.S. Air Force at Reese Air Force Base in Texas and then flew operationally in the Italian Air Force. Next stop was the U.S. Navy Test Pilot School and a post-graduation trip with his classmates to visit NASA. All my colleagues, American colleagues, were thinking about becoming an astronaut and I was thinking, bad luck that I am not U.S. Obviously, in Italy, uh, it's not that easy to have uh, opportunities for astronauts. Two years later, while Vittori was working as a test pilot in Italy, he put in an application when the Italian Space Agency was looking for astronauts. He was selected and became a European Space Agency astronaut and trained as a member of the 1998 class of astronauts at NASA's Johnson Space Center. Vittori flew to the International Space Station on a Soyuz taxi flight in 2002 and then on a 10-day science flight in 2005 during the Expedition 10 to 11 crew exchange. He later served as an Italian Air Force liaison officer and completed master's degrees in aeronautical sciences at the University of Naples and in physics at the University of Perugia. This flight is the second station trip for retired Air Force Colonel Greg Johnson. Johnson was a military brat, born in the United Kingdom and raised all over the United States. He was inspired to become an astronaut during a family visit to his grandparents in Traverse City, Michigan, when they all watched the Apollo 11 moon landing. I was seven, my brother was nine, my sister was 11, and uh, uh, we um, were amazed and I said, wow, I'd, I'd love to be an astronaut. So that was kind of the bit that was set way back when I was seven. Johnson graduated from high school in Fairborn, Ohio, and went to the Air Force Academy to become a pilot and an engineer. After graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical Engineering and earning a Master's in Flight Structures Engineering at Columbia, Johnson was assigned to Reese Air Force Base as a pilot and then a pilot instructor. He flew combat missions in Operations Desert Storm and Southern Watch before attending the Air Force Test Pilot School, which rejuvenated the engineer in him and made him think about his childhood dream of becoming an astronaut. I'm flying really cool stuff, and they like to hire test pilots because each shuttle mission really is a test flight. And so I uh, went ahead and threw my name in the hat. Johnson was selected by NASA in 1998, earned an MBA from the University of Texas at Austin in 2005, and piloted the 2008 shuttle flight that delivered the first components of Japan's Kibo laboratory complex. Dr. Drew Feustel's first space flight got him nowhere near the International Space Station, but he got up close to something that none of his crewmates has ever seen before. 
Foistel was born and raised in Lake Orion, Michigan, north of Detroit. You have fond memories of summer and winter. You know, I think winters were quite enjoyable. Uh, we used to do a lot of snowmobiling and snow skiing, and in the summers we spent our time uh, water skiing. Um, and being a suburb of Detroit, Motor City, um, I became interested in automobiles at an early age. Foistel raced motorcycles and go-karts as a boy, and he had cars in mind after high school when he went to Oakland Community College. Specializing in geology with a minor in industrial design. So you could say I was pursuing two careers, one as a scientist, one as an automotive designer. While working as an automotive restoration mechanic. After he finished his associate's degree, he went to Purdue for a bachelor's in solid earth sciences and a master's in geophysics and was the team cart driver for his fraternity. And then he earned a PhD in geological sciences at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. He worked as a geophysicist in Canada and then for ExxonMobil Exploration in Houston before he was picked as an astronaut in 2000. Foistel completed three spacewalks during the final servicing mission to the Hubble Space Telescope in 2009. I think for humans it's always been about what's out there, are we alone, could we be the only ones in this infinite universe? And I think the only way we're going to find out is if we keep pushing the boundary and trying to get out there. And, and this is just the beginning.